Hello everyone, Michael back from another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the filter, lookup, and search functions in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Team, SharePoint, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because if you want out more videos in those areas. So let's get started. So right now I am in my marketing Power App and I'm connected to my marketing SharePoint and I'm going to be using the employee data, data SharePoint list to use the filter search and lookup functions. Uh, first, we'll just connect the data sources. If you don't know how to do that, you go over here, click on the left-hand side, the data, add data. I want to do SharePoint. So SharePoint sites. No, not this one. Uh, this one, SharePoint. That one's looking at uh, the dataverse. I'm using SharePoint online. So I'll just use my connection and we're using the marketing SharePoint and the employee data. So if you're using more than one data source, so if you, if you're using multiple lists, you can go ahead and check mark more and it'll import all of those. I'm just using the employee data. All right. So now we're able to use all this data in this SharePoint list and I'll be filtering, doing lookups and searches on it. So let's go ahead and insert a a data table this is probably like the best uh, to show you guys how the how the uh, functions work so once you insert the data table ask you what data source are you looking at i'm going to do the employee data and let's just go ahead and move this down here we'll drag it down and it looks like we have a few errors so let's just resolve these really quick uh the skill one so since this is a multiple choice field, they can choose more than one skill. Uh, there's actually something more you need to do with that. I'm not going to show it in this video. I'll do another video about that, how to do multiple choice fields. And it looks like the attachment fields given an error. So I'll just remove that for this video. And let me make these fields a little bit smaller so they fit on the screen. Okay, so we have all my data right here from the SharePoint list. So as you can see, we have all the data. I only have like 10 rows. So let's go ahead and click on the data table. So at the top left, you have the items. So it's looking for all the items in the employee data list. There's nothing filtered, searched, or looked up on this. It's just showing all the raw data. So to do a filter on this one, so a filter will return all the results that match the character criteria you put in the formula so let's go ahead and we will remove that and as you can see the table doesn't know what's going on that's fine so in the top bar up here let's just go ahead and do a filter so next uh, it's going to ask you for the data source so we are working with the employee data sharepoint list so that's just going to be employee data in single quotes so if you have a space in the SharePoint name, you need to put it in single quotes. If you don't have a space, you don't need to put uh, single quotes. That's just to contain the string. So next it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna filter by, the logical test? So we'll just do something simple uh, as an example. So this is the title field right here, the first name. So let's just do title equals and I think there's an Alexa in there. And this needs to be a string, so that needs to go in double quotes. So if I just put this in and close it with single parentheses, there you go. It's going to return all the results with Alexa in there. So let's go ahead and do something a little more that will return more than one result. So this is a choice field. Um, you can only choose one for the job title. If you're doing multiple selections, that's a little more trickier, but we're just gonna stay with the single, a single choice field. So let's go ahead and do a filter on that field. So let's go ahead and do, it was job title. So job title, and since this is a choice field, you gotta do dot value to get the value out of the choice field. And we'll just do equals, software developer so if i close that out it's going to give me all the software developers 
and you could do a different a few different logical tests so if we want to do like another formula is starts with so we can do starts with and then it's looking for what do you want to filter the column name so we'll just do job title dot value and the next thing it's asking for is software so if i did that and close it up that logical test is going to look for all the job titles that start with software and i have two software developers so that's filtering pretty much and let's just go ahead and do a combo box so you're probably not going to have like specific formula where you're just doing equals to a first name uh, you want the user to probably select hey i want to i want to filter by we'll just do job title again since it's a, a choice field and you're probably using choice fields for this so let's go ahead and insert a combo box on the screen as well so combo box and for the data source we'll do employee data so it's looking at the fields it's looking at the comments field so let's make this so job title isn't showing up because it's probably too complicated of a field for it to look at so let's just go ahead and do choices employee data okay there we go so for some reason it didn't want to recommend me the job title i've noticed that in uh power apps lately if you do the choices formula on the table and try to choose a column it doesn't recommend the the columns but that's how you would get the all the choices for the job title field so all of these let's say a user wants to select a job title so we'll just say filter by job title okay so a user would go in and select something so let's go ahead and make this combo box a single selection because we don't want to allow multiple selections we'll just do a single selection for now say they chose i want to show all the data analysis so right now the data table is not hooked up to the combo box so let's go ahead and make that happen so go back and click on the data table go to your items and add the filter uh, parentheses your data table which is the employee data in my case and then i want to do for the logical test the combo box name so that's combo box one so combo box one dot selected so i'm doing dot selected because we're not doing multiple values multiple values would be the selected items i'm just doing selected dot value to get the selected value which is data analysis and we'll do equal to job title dot value so it's looking at the combo boxes selected value which is data analysis and it's looking at the job title field in the SharePoint, which is right here in the choice field. I'm looking at that value. So if a user wanted to go ahead and say, hey, what are all the recruiters? There you go. You can filter by all the recruiters. Uh, investigators, clerk, database man, and software developers. So that's how you do filter. Uh, the filter returns multiple results as long as the logical statement is true. Let's go ahead and do a lookup. So the difference between a lookup and a filter is the lookup will only re return one result, uh, the first result actually in your data table. So it's not going to return multiple results. It's only looking for one. So if I did lookup right here, it only returns one result. But if I did the filter, it returns two results and that's because the lookup is only going to look at uh, your SharePoint list and say hey I'm only looking for one result uh, the software developer and the first software developer in my list is Joe Joe Smith so that's the difference between lookup and and filtering 
depending on how you want to do it, it's up to you if you only want to return one result. Uh, usually, if you have a bunch of unique values in the SharePoint list, you can do a lookup. But uh, it really all depends on your use case. So it's the same, pretty much same formula. A lookup, your data source, and then your lot, your condition. And I believe, so if I did filter again, you could have more than one uh, condition. So if I did another comma, you can add a second logical test and say, hey, we want to do comma box uh, selected. And then we also want to do, we'll do title equal to Joe. Because I know Joe is a software developer. And as you can see, it, it looks at both of these cases and says, okay, we'll look for the software developer and then we'll look to see uh, if any software developers are Joe. So you can do multiple conditions on the filter and lookup. If I did lookup as well, the lookup, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll do title equal to the other software developer, which is Ronnie. Okay, so for the lookup one, you can't do multiple a logical test, you can only do one. But if you do like an and statement or an or statement after, you can put in more than one. So we're just doing, um, if it's a software developer, we'll do that and the title is equal to Ronnie. So the first name is equal to Ronnie. Okay, last you wanna do a search field. So if we do search on this, it's not gonna work. Search is a whole different thing. So search looks for a string within the column you're looking for. So if I did search and we'll do the data source, which is the employee data. And then I need a search text. So we'll just do Ronnie. And then you have to specify which column you want to search on. And we'll just do title. And for the column, it looks like you have to put it in double quotes. So it's search the employee data field for Ronnie on the title column. Uh, if I did software, so let's search software and then we'll search it on the job title field. So for the search function, you can only do it on strings. So I tried doing it on the job title field, but this is a choice column. And choice columns are stored as records in Power Apps. So I wasn't able to do it. So you have to do it in double quotes, the column field that you want to search on. I don't really use searches too much. I really haven't found them too beneficial. If I wanted to do this, I would just do a, a filter. But if you want to search like a string within a string, so I want to search like Mark in the first name field, which is title. I can do that. I'd rather just do a filter, employee data, and then just do title equal to Mark. So search the whole list for Mark. But if you want to do search, you can. Uh, I haven't really used it that much. I usually just use filters and lookups. So if I did uh a text box so let's just do one more thing so let's say you want a user to enter in some information like a first name so this will actually needs to be an input field a little bit easier to work with so we'll just do a text input so i'm expecting a text input here and we'll just say a text label enter name Okay, so you got your text input where a user will enter in the first name you want to search by. Let's go back to our data table and do a filter on. And we'll do title equal to text input one dot text. So now it's looking at the text in the input box. So if we go ahead and remove this and start typing mark. It looks at, uh, it filters the SharePoint list, the employee data list, and it looks at the title field, which is the first name field, and it looks for Mark. 
So if I did this for, we'll just say enter job title. And let's go ahead and do text input dot text. And we'll do job title dot value equal to that. So let's go ahead and start typing something. Software developer. So it needs to be an exact match for this. So software developer, you probably want to do a, a combo box for that. But yeah, it's pretty nice if you want to search for like a single name. You just do title. Do Alexa. And there you go. I'm not sure. I actually activate my Alexa. But let's try a starts with. The title. We'll do starts with title. And then we want to start with the text input one dot text. Close out the parentheses. So I think now if I start typing A, there you go. You can you can uh, see all the results, you know, dynamically as you enter in the character. So Alexa. Or if you want Alice, it will show that. Let's a uh, quick little power up video with some uh, tricks and a little tutorial on the functions of search, lookup, and filter. Uh, they're very useful if you're working with uh, sets of data, and I highly recommend using them. So if you like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I will catch you in the next video.